is uh, Sam Kelly, and uh, I live in Scarborough, Maine, and I've been involved with uh, an organization called Vet to Vet here in Maine. It's uh, one of the best things I ever did in my life, believe me. And uh, I'm um, a veteran from the late 60s, uh, U.S. Army, uh, spent a year in Vietnam, and um, getting involved with this organization, Vet to Vet, is literally one of the best things I ever did in my life as far as giving back to, uh, to my fellow veterans and well, just giving back to my community. And um, anyways, is in here in Maine, we have about 100,000 veterans and uh, uh, it's just a great organization here for the state of Maine. And uh, anyways, tonight I want to introduce uh, the uh, people that are very involved in this group. Uh, uh, two people in particular is Sue Gold, who is the creator of the uh, Vet to Vet operation, and uh, Lynn White, who is uh, a fellow veteran, been on the uh, been involved with uh, uh, the Vet to Vet group for years, and on the board of directors. And uh, I just wanted to thank you both for coming in tonight. Well, thank <laughs> you. And, uh, the first question I have is uh, tell us a little bit about Vet to Vet, if you could, Sue. Sure. and how you got involved. Okay, well, vet to vet goes back a ways, vet to vet Maine. Um, we got our start in 2014 as a program for, for Southern Maine Agency on Aging. Uh, they uh, created a VISTA position for uh, Volunteers in Service to America to help research and develop a program that would benefit older veterans in York and Cumberland counties. And um, I was a VISTA volunteer, and I applied for the position and got it. And uh, so I did some research on what would be helpful to older veterans in southern Maine. And in my research, um, I had a number of veterans tell me that they would never ask for help from anyone except another veteran. Really? Wow. And I had some uh, experience with peer-to-peer uh, support groups, and I, I felt very strongly from that evidence as well that a peer program for veterans would be um, very beneficial. Mm -hmm. And I also learned in my research that um, more than 50 percent of, of veterans in southern Maine are 65 or older, and many are living alone or with an aging spouse. And, or, and many were living with, um, are living with uh, adult children who work, so they're virtually alone most of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, I was thinking we really need to have some way to help these veterans um, first who are, are living alone, who are, some of them are socially isolated from the community and from other people. Uh, and the other thing I found was that only about a third of veterans in Maine made use of the benefits that the VA offers them, uh, benefits that they earned. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I thought, you know, we really also need to find a way to connect these veterans with services that can improve their life. Um, and so I decided that a friendly visitor program might be a good way to do that. And it, but I, I felt strongly, as I said, that a peer program would be the best way to connect with veterans. So we made it a peer-to-peer -peer friendly visitor program. So we started uh, recruiting veterans who wanted to help other veterans. And we matched them after we trained them and we uh, screened them, of course. And then we matched them to other veterans who could use a friend. We didn't have any time. Um, at that point, stage, we were, ho we were pretty much exclusively uh, serving older veterans because it, it was uh, through the Agency on Aging. And it became very popular. Our, our volunteers uh, thought that, well, they told me they were getting more out of it than the, better, than the veterans mm -hmm. that they serve. They still tell me that. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that's true. I think the veterans <laughs> they serve also get as much out of it, but um, on both ends. They, they were really enjoying that time that they spent together. And we asked each um, volunteer, we called them peer companions, and we asked them to spend at least um, two times a month to visit with, this, with their veteran that they were matched with. Um, 
and they were also serving as eyes and ears if they felt that there was a problem or something, um, some service that could benefit uh, the veteran they were visiting. For example, if they didn't have the right kind of food or enough food, uh, Meals on Wheels, they would match them up with Meals on Wheels. We've had all kinds of um, things that we've been able, services and programs that we've been able to bring to veterans th through this program. So anyway, this became very popular. And at some point, um, we had a quasi board for the, for the program at SMA. And uh, the board and I thought, felt that we really wanted to expand. We wanted to be able to bring it to younger veterans too, um, who might, uh, especially combat vets who are coming home and might need a mentor to, to reintegrate in, with civilian life. Um, and we also wanted to expand beyond York and Cumberland counties. And so we looked into forming our own nonprofit, and that's what we did in 2018, in June. And, um, and we also got 501c3 tax exempt status from the federal government um, in March of 2019. So we became Vet to Vet Maine, and we started out with about I think 40 volunteers at that point. We now are up to over 100 volunteers, uh, and about 80 of those volunteers are uh, peer companions or have been trained as peer companions. Wow. So that's, that's the story. <laughs> Good. We'll have more questions for you. Okay. <laughs> Let me ask Lynn a couple questions. Sure. Um, tell me a little bit about your background, uh, you know, where you came from. Sure, uh, you, sure. uh, when you were in the service, uh, how sure, long you were in the service, sure. and how you got involved with uh, Vet to Vet? Oh, thanks, Sam. Uh, well, first off, uh, Sam and I served in um, the military at the same time. We went to basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey in 1967, late 1967. So that's when I entered the service. Uh, I was, uh, at the, it was prior to going to uh, college, so I went into the service and spent I spent three years in the Army. I did my basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey, and then went to Fort Linwood, Missouri for uh, training as an engineer, and then uh, off to Vietnam. I did a tour in Vietnam, and then I did a tour in Germany, and after that went to college, um, got a degree in engineering, and for the next 40 years ran different businesses, industrial businesses. So I retired in early 2015, and we moved to Maine, built a house, moved to Maine, and I was sitting in my easy chair reading the newspaper one Sunday morning, I think it was, and there was an article about vet to vet. And I thought, that's interesting. And so I called and met Susan, and uh, next thing I knew, I was uh, a volunteer, <laughs> went through the training, of course, no, no. and uh, became a vet to vet volunteer. Um, mm -hmm. And just to digress a bit, uh, two of my very close childhood uh, friends who still are in upstate New York, uh, both have suffer, or have been suffering for a time from Agent Orange, and they are having a difficult time. I spend time on the phone, the phone with them, and as I, as I learned more about vet to vet I thought, geez, what a wonderful thing if it were available to them. Of course it wasn't, but I thought, well, I can certainly help some veterans here in Maine who, uh, who would probably would, you know, may have similar you know, difficulties. So at any rate, so I, I, I joined Vet to Vet Maine. Um, I've had the great opportunity to have to befriend and work with three different veterans. Mm -hmm. um, the first veteran I worked with, uh, Paul, was an Army veteran. He was a paratrooper during the Korean War. Um, had a great, great relationship with, um, with Paul and got to meet a lot of his family. Um, and that's the other thing about Vet to Vet Maine. Not only do you end up befriending and working with a veteran, but more often than not, you end up meeting a lot of their family. And they, you know, and Paul's family and the others that I work with, they kind of accept you as a, almost like a member of the family. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked with Paul. Um, he ended up, uh, he was living uh, with his relatives. He ended up in uh, um, the Scarborough Veterans Home. And for, unfortunately, during the COVID uh, time, he, he, passed, he passed away. Uh, Susan then matched me up with uh, Robert. It was very interesting. Robert was a merchant mariner during World War II. He was off the coast of Normandy during the invasion. Wow. Um, 
and Robert and I really hit it off. Of course, there was a difference in age. He was approaching 100 years old, um, but he was, he was from upstate New York as well. So we, we had a lot of stories, and we really hit it off. We had a great time with him and his family. Got to spend a lot of time with his wife, Mary, as well as Robert. Um, and he'd tell a lot of stories about uh, not only being off the coast of Normandy, and uh, they used their ship at some times for a lot of the wounded would be brought aboard, and they would help treat the wounded. Um, he was on a lot of different uh, convoys, um, very dangerous convoys, told a lot of other stories. Uh, and it was interesting because he would, he, we would we'd talk about his travels, and then... I'd meet him the next time, he'd say, Lynn, I remembered the name of the ship I was on. So he'd really? tell me the name of the ship, <laughs> and then I, I would, next time I'd go, I'd do some research. I found, in a couple of cases, I found a, I found a picture of the, of the ship and a little bit about where it traveled, and I'd come back and I'd share that with him. It was really, uh, just really, really great. Uh, really enjoyed Robert a lot, and uh, he ended up passing away just two months short of his 100th birthday. He was doing pretty well, but unfortunately just took turns for the worst and but almost a hundred years old it was uh, yeah um, and he was still really, had good really memory great. oh yeah yeah oh, yes. that was Robert he was sharp as attack really up until the end he was sharp as attack um, and then Susan uh, a little time went by and Susan matched me up with Peter and Peter was an army uh, veteran he was same thing early 50s uh, yeah. Korean War era he was an artillery uh, uh, officer and um, Peter lived alone. He'd lost his wife a few years prior to my meeting uh, Peter. And um, it was great. We had a great time. He had a great garden in the back. He lived in Port Elizabeth, and I'd go there, and we'd get together and go out and do some weeding. And, and um, just, just, it was really great. We had a great time for quite, quite, a, quite, quite a time, uh, quite a long time. Um, and then, um, unfortunately, you know, Peter had some difficulties. He had, took a couple falls. He, he wouldn't give up going out and mowing his lawn, and he had, like, a steep lawn. So I, I, I remember driving into the driveway one day, and he's got a lawn that slopes down, and he's on the lawnmower, and he's kind of pushing the lawnmower up, and I'm thinking, oh, my goodness, he's going to fall. He never did then, but he did fall in his garage and yeah. banged his head and was in the hospital for a bit. But at any rate, uh, he, he ended up uh, passing out in his sleep very, peaceful, very peacefully. Um, so I've had a great experience, and, and as Susan mentioned, uh, I certainly have taken as much from the program as, as uh, I think the veterans that I've that I've been friends with have have uh, gotten out of it as well. But it's been a, a, a great program. Have had a uh, have had a great great time um, mm -hmm. as uh, being a part of the program since. Well, I was in the second class, I guess. Yeah. Uh, exactly. yeah, second class. I don't even know what class yeah. I was in. <laughs> so, uh, so, no, it's a great, great program. And, yeah. and um, uh, now, as Susan said, you know, when we were at SMA, we were looking to, we wanted to, we wanted to expand, and we thought, hey, having a veteran-managed, veteran-run organization would be the best way for us to uh, be able to expand within the state of Maine and, and hopefully be a model so that the vet to vet type program can reach out to other parts of the country because there are so many veterans well like the friends I have in New York that would really benefit from having a friend. Oh I agree. So, uh, I agree. One thing I'd like to add too is that Lynn has been a, a fabulous support um, as president of the organization since it started and also he was part of the, the original um, quasi board at SMA too. Oh so really? He has oh, been okay. at the leadership helm since Pretty much day one. Well, along so. with Susan and some others. That <laughs> yeah, yeah that's time. true. But yeah. Yeah. and he still he still serves as president. Well, like I say, I've been involved for maybe four or five years. I can't remember exactly how many mm -hmm. years I've been involved. But uh, you know, I'm on my third veteran, and uh, you know, the first veteran, uh, he was living on his own, and uh, and he really shouldn't have been. He shouldn't mm -hmm. have been living in his own house, and uh, you know, he needed services, you know, like uh, somebody to help him cook, clean, you know, shop, etc. And um, anyways, I remember calling Sue and saying, you know, she's, you know, my vet, you know, could use some help type of thing. And th Sue, through her magic, <laughs> <laughs> was able to get somebody to come and help him at his house mm. for like five days a week. You know, I don't know if we probably don't do that anymore because of 
I think it was when you were affiliated maybe more with Smart, uh, Southern Maine Agency no, on Aging. We, we still, we can still, we do still that. work very closely with our collaborators, yeah. and one of whom is uh, um, Smart, Southern Maine Agency on Aging, but there are a number of others too who help, uh, the, and the VA, um, help us get um, oh, really? services for veterans. Um, unfortunately, because of COVID, it's been difficult Probably to get so. home care. But we still um, are working through collaborators, collaborations and to do that. What a service that was for this guy. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. because he was uh, about 85 or 90 at that time, you know, type of thing. And he desperately needed somebody to, you know, yeah. help him with cooking and shopping and things like this. And, uh, you know, for Vet the Vet provided that. And then he passed away uh, two years ago. And then my next veteran was a guy who was in a nursing home here in Portland. and. Uh, I visited him for about three or four months, and he was a, a Vietnam veteran, veteran also, but you know, a little older than me. And um, and I we visited him. And he was a wonderful man. You know, I just so enjoyed being around him. He was just a mm. good-natured person. And uh, but he passed away after about uh, you know four months or so, type of thing. And uh, now I'm on my <laughs> next veteran. <laughs> And he's a Second World War veteran and uh, living on his, with his wife uh, in Portland. And uh, we don't use last names here, but, uh, you know, so I visit him once a week. And uh, he's a known person in, in Portland. A lot of people know who he is. And we have a wonderful time. We really do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and again, through the vet to vet just recently, you know, he has always had problems with his hearing aids. They would fall out of his ears, down his shirt, and I <laughs> try to get down his shirt. <laughs> I couldn't do that anymore. <laughs> and uh, finally, we were able to get some like headphones for him. And um, but I was able, you know, to call to the VA and you know tell them the problem. He's a, you know a veteran, obviously. And uh, within like two weeks or a week, we had earphones in the mail for him. And uh, you know, and I attribute a lot of that to the, you, you know being able to use the vet to vet organization as a resource and uh, mm. to knock down barriers. And uh, he's a wonderful person. I mean, like I say, 95 years old. I was with him mm. yesterday, and he started singing these songs from <laughs> <laughs> back in 1935 or something. You know, and I go, how do you remember this? <laughs> And then I'm joking, I said, so, do you remember the hundred dollars you, you were going to give me? And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> that type of thing. So. Well, I think that's a great example, though, of how wonderful the volunteers are in finding ways to help their veterans because um, we got a, a very glowing report from this gentleman's case, a VA caseworker who said that Sam was instrumental in getting um, help for him and for socializing him helping him get out into the community again and talking with other people and because he had been isolated in two ways, isolated at home, but also by not being able to hear anything, he was isolated that way too. Oh, and yeah. now he is no, he, now he can follow the conversation. Yeah, he can. It, yeah. It's amazing. So. Just those earphones, what a yeah. difference it, mm. it seemed to have made. And I know it was easier for me when I, because I'd go over there and for 45 minutes would yell at each other. <laughs> and that, not an exaggeration, yeah. we'd be, you know, five feet apart and we're <laughs> screaming. And I'm going, get out of here. <laughs> oh, that, so he is so much, yeah. you, know, what a, you know. And I attribute this to Vet to Vet. You know, I mean, the great success. Uh, you know, I'm a great supporter of Vet to Vet and uh, it's a wonderful group. And, uh, you know, Sue and Lynn, Lynn, you know, as far as it's a great board of directors, it's a great group of guys. People, I should say, because it's not all guys, because there's ladies involved also. That's true. Mm -hmm. And there's about how many uh, veterans do we have in the Vet to Vet program who are who volunteers visiting now, approximately? Well, right now, I think we have about 70 matched up, 70 pairs, yep. um, but we have about 10 more. Well, we just graduated in, uh, 10 more um, volunteers, a new, new crop of volunteers, and we have about at least that many v veterans who are waiting to get matched up. So. Um, we're always, and there's, there's always some um, turnover because of the age, the advanced age of, of the veterans we're helping. So, um, but often, uh, when a when a veteran dies, that per, that veteran's um, peer companion might want to take a 
couple months off just to grieve, I think. It, it, the relationships become very close. And so that happens sometimes. And they'll take a little time off, and then they'll start up. And other, other peer companions want to get right back in because they miss that, that uh, relationship, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, I tell people, you know, the, these relationships often develop into lifelong, uh, lifelong relationships. And we've had a number of cases where our volunteer has sat at the bedside of their veteran mm -hmm. as he dies. Um, he, and I remember one in particular that was, it touches my heart because this man, um, he was referred to us by social, by a ca caseworker, and she said he has no one. He doesn't even have an emergency contact. Mm -hmm. The only people he had in his life were workers. Uh, you know, uh, he had a, um, a wonderful care uh, person who came and helped clean the house and, and prepare meals and she was very fond of him but of course she was a, an employee and um, then his uh, caseworker so the person I, I matched him up with this wonderful volunteer who became so close to him and um, at, at one point he let he, he had a lot of health challenges his name was, he was Franklin and uh, he had to be on oxygen he was in a wheelchair, and he told um, his volunteer that he had never been able to see his wife's grave. She had died the year before, and he had never been able to see her. She was at the Veterans Cemetery in Sanford. And so the volunteer talked with the nurse, the visiting nurse, and said, okay, I need to know how to change his um, oxygen because the tank wouldn't last that long oh, okay. a trip. So she showed him how to do that, he loaded it up, loaded it up, put his the wheelchair in his vehicle, and they headed out for Sanford. And he wheeled Franklin to his wife's grave and left him there for a few. Said, "Okay, when you're ready, I'm going to leave you here for a while to communicate with your wife. And when you're ready, just raise your hand, and I'll come and get you." And that meant so much to Franklin. Really? Wow. Um, it, it, that's the kind of gift that. Mm -hmm. You can't buy. You can't buy that kind of caring, mm -hmm. and that's why it's so. Uh, I think that's why it's so rewarding for the volunteers too, because they know that they've given so much, such a gift that cannot be replicated. It's something that they have to give from their heart. Mm -hmm. Oh my so God! Yeah. That's yeah and there's so many stories like that. Yeah. You know, the, before the COVID, uh, we would get together. I say we, all the volunteers, typically would get together once every couple of months, case review, um, and go around the table and we'd all share, our, you know, stories and what was going on with the veterans we were working with. And so you got to hear a lot of really great, great stories. I mean, some were just hilarious, some were very sad, <laughs> and they just ranged the gamut from just all over the place, but it was just so interesting. And a lot of times you could, you could, you could take something out of those reviews and it would help with the relationship you had with your veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody yeah. maybe was having some difficulty maybe maybe with the setting that the veteran was in with their family or whatever the case might be and you know you learn something from it that would help and again it would be sometimes very entertaining you know, very <laughs> sad very happy it was just great now we do them via zoom yeah. because of the pandemic and hopefully in the not too distant future we'll be able to resume our our in-person uh, or in-person meetings uh, so that's another great part of the program you get to meet not only do you get to meet other you know the veterans that you're going to befriend and work with but you get to meet a lot of other veterans like you know meeting you Sam and other veterans on the board and many of the other volunteers and you get to share with them as well mm -hmm. so it's it's a it's a great network that you can of, of veterans that you can um, that you can meet and learn and, and, and work with and, and uh, learn from and enjoy the company of. So it's a great program. Now, what kind of training do the uh, people have to go through here? Or is, how does that work anyway? We have about, it's about a nine hour training at this point. Um, and they learn how to um, communicate. They get some real good tips about how to communicate well, how to listen effectively, uh, how to set boundaries. Um, they learn what kinds of um, problems that they might encounter, um, PTSD, how to deal with PTSD, um, dementia, 
uh, various things that might um, affect their veteran. They learn, um, they have, we also have a, a panel of volunteers who have been out in the field, uh, peer companions who have been out in the field, and they talk about their experiences, let the, the volunteers know what's in store, um, <laughs> how they react, re relate to their veterans. We have another panel of resource experts, so someone from the VA, someone from the Maine Bureau of Veterans Services. Um, we have someone from Southern Maine Agency on Aging. Still involved. Um, oh. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we have um, this, uh, some other, sometimes we fill in with other people as well who talk about what services are out there and available for um, veterans so that they'll know what, what they might be able to offer their veteran. Mm -hmm. And then we have a number of other, um, we, we t certainly talk about our policies as an organization and what we expect of our volunteers and we go over the paperwork and all that stuff that they have to do. But, um, and then sometimes, and we also go over, um, we give them some strategies to use if they would, if they encounter some dif any difficulties. And I always tell people, um, you know, this is a, an opportunity to have a wonderful relationship. Mm -hmm. But sometimes, it, the first time, it, we don't, we, I'm, I'm pretty good at matching. I'm a matchmaker <laughs> by heart. But it doesn't always work. So I, I, I really reiterate and tell them um, if it doesn't work, you know, you, you know if it's going to work or not usually. Mm -hmm. You can tell. And if it's not going to work for you, then that's fine. Just let us know and we'll find somebody else for you and we'll find mm -hmm. someone else for the, fallen, for the veteran. And I've done that. That one fabulous, fabulous example was early on. We had a veteran who was um, very compromised. He couldn't. Um, he was very. He wasn't very mobile. He stayed in his room most of the day. His adult stepdaughter lived. Uh, he lived with her, but she worked during the day, so he was pretty much alone, and with his dog. I think he had a dog. Oh. And uh, but he was not very mobile, and he couldn't see very well. So. I, the first veteran, the first volunteer I sent in, um, told uh, told us he didn't. He just didn't think he could reach him. He he was not able to get him to talk. Uh, he couldn't relate to him at all. So we might match that that peer companion to another veteran, and he they hit it off so well that when the veteran died, the family gave our our peer companion the the flag that. Was, really? Yes. Oh, wow. That touches. Now, back to the veteran, we <laughs> matched him up with another volunteer who was fabulous. He just was so interested in people's history, and he got him talking about his past and about his, his um, work, and it, it ended up with they spent three two or three times a, a week talking about this guy's history and recording it, uh, recording his autobiography. And the guy was so involved with this, he looked forward to it every time. And every time the, the volunteer left, he said, now, when are you coming again? <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? So wow. they were both, they both worked wonderfully well. So we, yeah. we really want people to let us know if it's not working, because sure. if it's not, we'll make it work with somebody else, and that's fine. Now, do you have women involved also? Oh, certainly. Okay. We have some fabulous women yes, who've been do. involved <laughs> <laughs> on the board yeah. and elsewhere. Um, one great example was Charlene, um, who was a teacher and a veteran, and Vi, who was a, a nurse practitioner in World War II. And they had a fabulous time. Charlene, they would go out to breakfast every Friday. And people knew Vi, so they would stop by the table. All the you know, it'd be a constant stream of people walking by, saying, "Hi, Vi, how are you?" <laughs> was and Vi the volunteer? Or no, Vi was, was the 90, or 90 yeah. at the time. I think she was oh. 95, maybe oh, wow. or 96. Yeah, she'd been involved in all kinds of things. And then, um, as time went on, um, she was living in an assisted living place, and her daughter had tried to get a VA pension which um, she felt she was entitled to, but it had been held up for the last two years, and she was running out of money, and she, her daughter was getting pretty desperate because she was afraid she was going to have to move out of her assisted living, okay. and she didn't know what she was going to do. Mm -hmm. So they told Charlene, and um, the, the, the daughter told Charlene, and Charlene said, no problem, we'll get it done. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> so she called us, and um, mm -hmm. we called... Um, uh, Representative Pingree's office. Okay. Three weeks later, I got a call from the daughter. Said, 
Well, we got the pension and it's two three weeks. years retroactive. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Vi was able to, didn't have, she had no problems with with money after that. Oh, wow. And she did, she died about, I think she was 98 when she died. Is that right? But they had a fabulous relationship. They just really, very caring for each other. Yeah. So there are, how many w women have been involved anyways over there? Um, I would say probably about a quarter of our, oh, really? maybe so. not, maybe not quite that many. So 20 um, or maybe 30 Maybe between or 15 and 20 percent, oh, wow. I guess. Okay. Good. Well, that was sort of representative of what the military is. Yeah, probably, I would, probably, yeah. wouldn't yeah. be surprised. You yeah. know, well, actually, it's a little bit less than that yeah. in Maine, anyway. But then you have one particular person, uh, Gretchen. Oh yeah, we we have some mm. fabulous volunteers, I and mean, yeah. we have uh, Gretchen Evans, who's uh, um, a, a pretty much an international star as yeah. a member of Team. Im she started Team Unbroken, which is uh, in. Um, Bear Gillis's, uh, what is it, the, uh, the uh, race, the world's uh, toughest race. World's toughest race. Oh, really? Okay. And she's fabulous, and she's been volunteering with us as a PR person and fundraiser, and she's just very supportive of our, our operation. So she's and, and inspirational. I mean, she's amazing. Yeah, she was the she held the highest rank uh, enlisted rank in the service uh, for a man or a woman. It was, it was a uh, I think not, not a master. I forget yeah, what it's command major. command master sergeant major. I can't remember exactly the yeah. title, but uh, Way up. and she was uh, she was in a uh, uh, she was injured wounded in. Afghanistan, was it Afghanistan, was it? or right. was it Afghanistan? Afghanistan. Uh, yeah. With a bomb, and she lost her, she lost her hearing. So she, and she's remarkable in terms of her story and what she's gone through, and and um, very inspirational, mm -hmm. and uh, very willing to share her story, mm -hmm. which is uh, remarkable in itself. I think all of the challenges that she faced, she she lost her hearing mm -hmm. uh, permanently, mm -hmm. um, and she has uh, head injuries. Um, and just all the challenges that she faced and how she overcame that um, to, to be a world-class athlete. I, I mean, it's amazing. And on top of it, I think she does motivational speaking yes. for, into, for companies, right? To, yes. to, she does, know. but she, mm -hmm. it, to benefit veterans organizations, yeah. and we're one of them, which mm -hmm. we're very fortunate. Oh, yeah, that's to great. Be. I wanted to mention that, you know, mm -hmm. because if there's some people out there who have a company looking for somebody mm -hmm. to provide great motivation, is a person. Absolutely. Is, it's a magnificent story. It really mm -hmm. is, uh, you know, type of thing. So. Um, and then we have Cheryl Weaver, who's on our board, and she's a veteran. Um, and she's been, uh, she was with us from the very beginning, mm -hmm. too. She was on the, on the um, quasi board at SMA and continues to be on our board and works, on, uh, really helps with uh, grant writing, which is essential in no our business <laughs> <laughs> to keep us going. And we have two fabulous part-time um, part staff members. Mm -hmm. We have a part-time uh, program manager, um, program director, Judy O'Malley, and we have a uh, new volunteer coordinator, Melissa Labertier, and they're both fabulous. Um, just one example, I, I came, I was away for two days and I came back and they've worked this miracle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> one of our, they were looking for, uh, one, of the vo one of our volunteers was looking for a decal that goes on the license plate for World War II veterans. Okay, yep. And the, the man, they were trying to get it for, it was really important for him to get it for his family so they, because his son was, I think his son was in Vietnam and his grandson was in the service as well. So they had three different decals. They wanted to have, and the World War II vet had never gotten his, and they wanted to get it so that they could have all three for the family for keepsake. Well, the veteran died before they could get the decal, so they wanted to get it posthumously. And the DM, the Department of, Marine of uh, the Bureau <laughs> of uh, Motor Vehicles was not really Cooperative. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Until? <laughs> um, well, they said, you know, the rules say you have to, the, the person has to be alive to get the yeah. decal. Yeah. And so one of our new volunteers <laughs> was in the legislature, state mm -hmm. legislature, and she worked her, uh, Melissa knew her. In fact, Melissa had already recruited her for Pet to Vet. And 
It's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> we don't always work miracles, but I'll tell you, there are a lot of miracles going on in this program. You're right. There is a lot of mag magic that happens <laughs> in this group of people that, you know, uh, you know, that veterans out there uh, are the recipient of, you know, type of thing. So, I mean, just like the, you know, like, you know the hearing, uh, you know, uh, things that I got for my veteran, you know, I mean, it, I was able to get it quickly, but because, partly because of my involvement with vet to vet really. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to the Veterans Administration down on Commercial, the new place on Commercial Street, went in there, talked to this lady, and uh, within two days, mm -hmm. my veteran has it. Right. And, uh, and then she sent a nice note on top of everything <laughs> else. <laughs> so I showed it to my wife, I said, hey, you know, so, so, <laughs> I don't want Sammy down this, you know? That's so, good. But, bad, right? um, well, I think it, it also, it, I mean, it, the services are there, and mm -hmm. it's not, a lot of times veterans just don't know yeah, that exactly. the services are there, mm -hmm. um, of course, or yeah. they need help. With, mm -hmm. They need help to mm -hmm. get it. They need to know what to do. They don't know what to and do. They don't, to get they don't it. want to ask, but then when they get with another veteran, then they're you, they're more willing to be. You know, they'll 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 ask another veteran where they won't ask someone right. else. They'll take the help from another veteran, mm -hmm. but maybe they wouldn't take the help from someone else. Yeah, because you know some of us older. People get stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> no. Really? <laughs> but, uh, I know a few of those. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that, that's a that's a big benefit is just that that yeah. network that that we can we can depend on. You know, mm -hmm. it kind of greases the skids. It legitimizes the request, if you will. It just really helps to move things along for our veterans, and that's the way it should be. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now the training takes how long? Well, it's nine hours. Nine um, hours. We are working on a, um, a an interactive virtual training that will take less time. Um, it'll take about five hours. Well, let's see. No, it'll be. It'll take about two and a half hours online on your own, mm -hmm. and then we'll have. We also have some other components. Um, we'll, you'll be the person will be interviewed by program director, and then we also will require them to come to a case review. Um, probably virtually, um, and that's when all the volunteers get together and talk about their experiences, as Lynn had mentioned, um, so that they'll get to know other veterans in the program. Um, it, this uh, mm -hmm. the virtual training will have its pluses and minuses. I mean, they won't be able to be in person with a bunch of other veterans at that at that time, mm -hmm. as they have before. But the but the benefit, and I think it's a big benefit is that they will be able to, once they enroll, they'll be able to tra be trained right away and, mm -hmm. be get, and become um, a peer companion within a matter of a month or two, because, um, and then we can match them right up. Uh, in the pad as it is now, uh, we have two or three vo uh, trainings a year, and, and we, uh, you know, when we get 10 or 12 people who want to be a volunteer, that we, uh, we wait for that, and then we have to set up the training. So a, a, a person could wait up to six months before they're able to go to training. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're working on this, um, this interactive piece. How are you raising, how would some of the, obviously need money to keep this organization going, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how do you go about raising money? And, uh, well, there's you know. a number of sources. Um, and, and some of our, uh, of course, staff is a big component sure. of our expenses. We also have to pay fifty nine fifty for each volunteer um, uh, for their background check and their um, driver's license check because some of them will be driving their vo their volunteer. Oh, I mean, okay. their veteran as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have other expenses too, of course, office expenses and mm -hmm. software, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, grants are a big portion portion of our. Uh, so our income, um, mm -hmm. and that requires a lot of time to uh, research them, mm -hmm. and write them, and um, submit them, and then once we get a grant to do annual or quarterly reports, or monthly, even monthly reports, it depends on the grant how much work we have to do after we get it, but there's usually a considerable amount of work after that, too. Oh, sure. I mean, people don't want to give money unless they think it's being spent wisely and I can't blame them for that. Um, so w grants are a big portion, um, but we also have 
Uh, we're working with bi local businesses to get more support um, from businesses who can pledge um, a yearly amount, and that would really help us because then uh, we don't have to guess whether or not we can have a, a staff member on hand. We don't want to sure. hire someone if we don't think we can keep them on for a number, you know, beyond a year. Um, uh, tell me quickly, uh, did you happen <coughs> to get a check the other day from somebody? We did. <laughs> <laughs> and how much did you get? <laughs> and I was just going to say, we have some wonderful, wonderful individual supporters. Mm -hmm. Among them are our volunteers, our board members, um, and one of our wonderful longtime volunteers, um, Jeff Reynolds, sent us a check for five thousand dollars. And he, I called him in <laughs> tears and said, "Thank <coughs> him." And and he said he really felt it was important to support this. Um, he felt that we were really doing wonderful work, and he is too. He's a peer companion, so he knows mm. what is going on and what he what kind of work is being done. He's done a lot of it himself. Um, but he feels that this is a way that he can help and he really um, was, is committed to this program. So oh. yes, we have wonderful, I, I can't, you know, we could not exist without our volunteers. Um, they're, they're the ones who do the majority of the work. They do the real work in the field. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do an awful lot for very little in terms of our budget. We reach so many veterans. Oh, yes. And with additional funds so we could hire some full-time help to help us to do the screening and the matching and many other things, we could reach so many more volunteers. Like you said in the very beginning, there's you know, 100,000. There's a tremendous number of veterans in the state of Maine, many located, concentrated in the southern part of Maine. Although we're reaching out to some other parts of the state, particularly yep. being able to be virtual now, that's you know, you know, the pandemic has its mainly minuses. There's a few pluses in that we've learned to use Zoom, et cetera. So some of the veterans that we maybe were would have been unable to reach in the past, we're able to reach now. Uh, but it's so important that we 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 get the additional funding so we can reach more more veterans and you know we're one of many veterans organizations that are out there looking for funds and we have a lot of great veteran organizations throughout the state of maine throughout the country and again we're one of many we're very unique we believe in terms of being all volunteer uh being a peer-to-peer -peer program where you know where veterans are befriending meeting helping other veterans so we're very unique in that respect and we're trying to get the word out that you know, we can do an awful lot with with very little. So, um, you know, fundraising is important. It's something that many of us, certainly myself and other, yeah. we've not done that. I was in business for years. We never had bake sales and <laughs> you had to do fundraising. You know, we, we were a profit organization. Mm -hmm. So it's it's new to many of us, but you know, we're kind of, we're muddling through it. We're, we're getting a little better at it. Um, Susan indicated we've got a number of grants that have helped us tremendously. But there's a lot more to do, and, and you know, I mean, certainly this program is one small avenue. Maybe we can reach some mm -hmm. additional veterans or businesses that might hear our story and decide, hey, this is a worthwhile organization. I think I may be interested, and so we hope that, you know, and certainly I'm sure before this program ends, we'll have out there our website and our phone number, <laughs> and please call us, and yeah. we'd be happy to, well, to I look uh, at, you know, I tell you more I'm, about us, and you know. Gretchen, you know, I mean, you know, she does a lot of motivational speaking around mm. the country, right? I believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, maybe some, you know, corporate people might see this and say, "Geez, I could use a, you know, somebody like her." I mean, here's a lady that, uh, you know, is a, a military hero. She really is, you mm -hmm. know, and who almost got killed in Afghanistan, correct? Mm. And uh, you know. Uh, some type of bomb that landed next yeah, to her, I guess yeah, it was, exactly, type yeah, of thing. Yeah. Now she's Most deaf certain, and, yeah. uh, you know, she's gone through an awful lot. And But she does motivational speaking. She does, she travels around the world for running in, um, I can't remember the name of the... World's tough, yeah. Toughest Race. World's, World's yeah. Toughest Race. Race, race. yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of motivational. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And I yeah. think of a guy in Scarborough, a guy named Eddie Wooden, you know, who, you know, uh, known for many years, very generous man, and, uh, you know, he's told us, you know, if you, you raise X amount, 
I'll match it. You know, you raise, I think it was 4000 or 5000 Yeah, he, he's you know. been, he was very helpful yeah. for that. So there's plenty of, you know, corporate sponsors and other sponsors. Yeah. And this is a, such a wonderful organization. It really is. I mean, yeah, like I say, I've been involved with many years. And yeah, there's so many businesses, and, and there's quite a number of businesses in Maine who do a lot of work for the defense. Yeah, true. Businesses. Many businesses have a lot of veterans that work for them. Mm -hmm. They may, and, exactly. and, and yep. it's so important to hopefully be able to reach out to these businesses and say, you know, hey, you have veterans that, you know, that, that work for you, or work in your organization. They probably have fathers uh, who perhaps could use the help of a veteran friend. So, you know, why don't you consider giving, even, you know, a small amount to Vet to Vet Maine? I you have know, to give a on behalf of the veterans that work for you. Do it on their behalf, yeah. right? Yeah. You know? I have to give a shout out to, to Derek Volk and Volk Packaging mm -hmm. because oh, yes. they, early on, they're early supporters of our, we were able to start right up um, as soon as we incorporated because Derek Volk pr provided us with a, an office in his, uh, at Volk Packaging in Bitterford. He provided us with uh, free Wi-Fi, with a phone, with a desk, with Conference um, room, yeah. Copy machine. Uh, he he's been fan, a fantastic support, and we're very grateful to him. Yeah, that, if you haven't visited the, the Heroes Wall, right? He has a Heroes oh, Wall with the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that right. honors veterans. So he's been a very great supporter from day mm. one. How did he happen to be, become a supporter? Anyways, was uh, do you know his motivation behind that? Uh, he's mm. he's uh, he's been a strong supporter of veterans for Military, a long time. Military, yeah, veterans, yeah. And I actually I interviewed him <laughs> early on. I, I in my other life I was a reporter oh, really? I and didn't know a, that. a writer, <laughs> and I interviewed his father. Um, because it, well, I worked for Business Digest at the time, oh, and we sure. did uh, stories on businesses, and so I interviewed his father. Hmm? Leo Gia was that? Oh his? yeah, <laughs> I knew very well. <laughs> so so I had you know we had some connection, and so uh, when I called him, I, I someone I'm trying to remember who also can, oh I know who it was Tom Heels um, went to his church, mm -hmm. and so he sort of set it up for us to meet and. But from day one, I mean, he treated me to breakfast. <laughs> he even paid for my breakfast. <laughs> really? <laughs> and said, oh, sure, I can give you an office space. Wow. It, not, it didn't take him a second. Um, mm -hmm. So it was, he, we were very grateful to him. Wow, and that changed, of course, with the COVID? Is that how uh, that? Yeah, since COVID, uh, we did shut down our office and we we're all working at home. But at some point, we'd like to resume having an office someplace. Uh, maybe in Portland. I don't know. We haven't decided that, but. Sure. And then yeah. we've had, you know, Cumberland County has supported us with a grant. Well, um, United Way in York County has supported us. Um, just recently, we got, um, we were selected by 100 plus women who care in Southern Maine. Oh, nice. um, Thanks to Susan. They, <laughs> <laughs> they gave us a, good, a really wonderful grant. So, uh, and the John T. John T. Gorman um, mm. Foundation gave us a great grant. So we, we've been very fortunate in the people who have supported us and but as, as Lynn says um, you know we really would like to expand and and offer our services to more people and with that to do that we do need more staff so that's mm -hmm. why we are out there beating the bushes mm -hmm. yeah, that's right <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a little break right now and we're going to show you a video about vet to vet gives you a little bit more information to uh, hopefully uh, entice you to want to get involved and to, uh, to volunteer or to, if you know somebody that needs some services from uh, vet to vet get in touch with us. I'm Phil Capalium. I live in Falmouth, Maine. I was in the U.S. Naval Reserve and I was in the amphibious force during D-Day. I am Florence Alquist Link. It was getting close to the war time. I wanted to go to work, and I went to work in the shipyard. My name is Dick Sproul. I live in Yarmouth, Maine. I was in the service from 1968 to 1970. My name is Vernon Francis Houston. I was working as a supervisor, a ship supervisor. I am Mary Dottie McGurk. And I went into the Air Force in 1954. My name is Eric Meehan. 
I served in the United States Army from November of 1961 to November of 1963. I saw an article in the paper, I think in December of last year, about this Veterans to Veterans program, and I thought perhaps I could be a contributor to that. I'm a Vietnam vet, and after all that time going by over 40 years, I finally decided that I wanted to get involved. One of the things when you get to be my age is a lot of your friends are not with you anymore. It's nice to talk to someone so we can have uh, quite a few things in common. I think that visiting another veteran who's housebound gives them something to look forward to. And you make good friends. And Dick here has uh, supplied a lot of information that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. And uh, I'm really grateful. I'm glad I enlisted in the program. Uh, this program has turned out to be as rewarding for me as I think it has been for the veteran that I visit. I think we became good friends, huh, Florence? That's right. That's <laughs> wonderful. If there was any doubt in your mind, go ahead and do it. <laughs>
-hmm. and letting people know that um, this is a viable way to say thank you to veterans, which we all need to do because we have asked them to make a great sacrifice. And I really believe that it's up to the rest of us to make sure that veterans get the help they need mm -hmm. when they come back. So that's what we're all about. Well, so <laughs> I, I think if, if people hear our story, uh, that can seal the deal. We can close the deal if we can get someone to hear our story. But it's difficult. People, you know, people are busy. And uh, so again, this is a great opportunity. We really appreciate the opportunity to talk about Vet to Vet Maine. And again, hopefully this will help us to reach out to, you know, a few more individuals that can learn about our program and yep. mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, uh, we can get more help. So we've got a few minutes left here, maybe five minutes or so. And uh, so what, how do they find you <laughs> again? Uh, it's the well, easiest way to... Um, probably our website, <laughs> www.vet2, the number two, yeah. vet, main, spelled out M-A-I-N-E dot org. Yeah. Um, you, know, you can also find us uh, on Google, just say vet to vet main, make sure you put yeah. the vein on there, and it'll come up on your search um, on your screen, uh, you can also call us. There's a numbers there. There are several numbers that you can call, but we'll put them on the screen. So that would be for a volunteer or for uh, to uh, volunteer, to or if you have a veteran in the family to, that to needs to donate, you, we, you can donate through the website. Uh, there's yeah. a lot of great information. There are some videos uh, where some of our veterans share their stories. Uh, there's just a lot of information on the website. Yeah, and yeah, if you want to uh, volunteer, you can enroll online. You can ask for help online. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Well, I want to thank you both very much thank you. <laughs> for thank your you services you yeah. and for coming in and uh, going through this whole thing. And, uh, and like I say, it's uh, one of the best things I've ever done. I think it's a great organization, and uh, I'm thrilled to be part of it. And uh, I think. Uh, Thank We're you. ready to wrap it up and thank, thank you very you much. For, thank you for having us.